Are you living life to its fullest? Are you as active as you'd like to be? Are you doing things that you used to do? Like when you were younger, are you making memories with those children, your grandchildren? And are you feeling the best that you can feel? If not, I've got a solution for you. Hi, I'm Darrell Lee Simmons, and I am going to bring to you today three simple steps to ignite your health and lose weight for good. I'm super excited to be here today, and I have actually, I'm recording this because as you're watching this, I'm out making memories with my grandchildren. I apologize, but I double booked this weekend and I am out skiing with my grandchildren this weekend. What a blast. Oh my gosh. I I just love it. They're 10 and 7. Still love spending time with Grammy. And hopefully that will last because I am able to get out and do things with them, spend time with them, and do the kinds of things that they love to do. And I'm still able to get out there and do those things too. So hold on, let me share a PowerPoint and I'm gonna give you the three simple steps you need to implement to get your health, wow, exactly where you want it to be. Take just a second here and bring it up. And um, sorry, wrong one. Here we go. All right. So I'd like to start with a small disclaimer, okay? I am here as a friend just sharing information, information that I've discovered through my journey to lose weight, feel better, and really to be able to live this last chapter of my life with vitality, with energy, with excitement, with enthusiasm, and with a zest to get the most out of every single day. I have no formal background in nutrition or medicine or anything like that. My background, I was a special education teacher and retired as a school principal. And uh, for much of my career, I also, in addition to wanting to support families, support individuals, because that's what I love to do, I have done tons and tons of research, gone to seminars, read books about nutrition, health, how to keep our bodies as healthy as we possibly can. And when I retired about a year and a half ago, I knew that I had this stubborn weight that I had lost and regained, lost and regained, lost and regained more times than I want to count, right? If that's you, been on that yo-yo diet, you know, treadmill, then this is for you because that was happening to me. I tried, you know, counting calories, counting carbs, um, counting uh, fat content, fat, all of the numbers, right? I've tried supplements, all the newest things. Uh, you know, newest fangled supplements that came out. I was like, yeah, let me try it. Let me try it. And they worked great for a while. But then, you know, my body either got accustomed to it or I, I stopped taking it, whatever. And then the weight came back very often, even additional pounds. So about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I said, you know what? I've got to figure this out. I, I want to just really feel good in my body. I want to lose the weight, not just for how I look, but really more importantly for how I be felt, right? I wanted to have more energy. I wanted to be able to, you know, play more with my grandchildren. I wanted to be able to hop on a bike and take a bike ride. And all of these things I wanted to be able to do successfully. And through much research, trial and error of my own, I developed Ditch the Diet. I began sharing it with some friends. They started having success. And that's when I said, you know what? I need to bring this to the masses because what I have, I believe, is really pretty amazing. It just, it's super simple, 
and it's super effective. So without further ado, let me jump in. So a little bit about me. I'm happily married. My husband, Bob, and I love um, adventure. We love to play golf. We love to go to the beach, all those kind of things. We have three grown adult children between the two of us. I'm a um, number one best-selling author. I love to cook. And those are my beautiful grandchildren. A year and a half ago, that was two summers ago. Uh, and like I said, as you're watching this, I'm out on the ski slopes with them today. But I just love um, the ability to be able to be of service. I was always um, of that mindset in my work. I worked with individuals with disabilities my whole life, supporting them and their families. And when I retired, I knew I wanted to do something to, to continue to be of service. And it, it brought me here. And I'm super excited to be here. And I want to you know, actually, while I'm here, Tina Meeks, thank you so much for offering this opportunity and getting all of us on here to get the word out because, oh my gosh, this is one powerhouse group and uh, we all have such a, a different take on the same thing, like living our best lives from, from, you know, looking through a different lens. So here we go. And the reason why I coined the term ditch the diet is because diets don't work. And if you've ever been on a diet, you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, very often they can be, they, they can work very effectively for a while, but to get a diet that's going to work long-term, that's really tricky. The reason many reasons, but one of the reasons is because they become very restrictive. Like you feel like, oh my gosh, I have to count these points. I have to count these calories. Oh, you know, um, is this allowed? Is that allowed? That kind of thing. And it really becomes cumbersome. At first, it's really exciting. You're really excited. You're really gung-ho. But in order to really embrace a healthy lifestyle and really embrace what healthy eating is all about, I have three main components for you to really consider. The first is all around clean eating. What do I mean by clean eating? Basically what cleaning eating is, is eliminating or significantly reducing the amount of highly processed foods that you're eating. Okay, that's a mouthful. What exactly is that all about? What it entails is if you pick up a package and there's an ingredient list with a ton of ingredients, half of them that you cannot read, cannot pronounce, look like chemicals, feel like chemicals, they probably are chemicals, they're not food, that would be considered a highly processed food. We want to try to get as much of that out of our diet as possible. Now I say eliminate, really what I mean is significantly reduce because unless you are farming yourself and you know growing all your own food, it's really pretty challenging to completely eliminate any highly processed foods. But the idea is to, to really significantly reduce that. Those fast food restaurants, uh, I would really highly recommend you stay away from those because again, their foods are full of all kinds of additives, artificial flavors, artificial colors, artificial sweeteners, or, um, you know, hydrogenized oils, all of those things that really are wreaking havoc on us. So then you say, okay, so what do I eat? That's really simple. You eat lean protein. That could be chicken, fish, um, turkey. There's even lean, lean cuts of beef that are appropriate. It's that those are really what you should be um, consuming small portions of those. What do I mean by small portions? When you're putting together your plate, one quarter of your plate should be these lean proteins. All right. Then you want to fill the rest of your plate with plants. I'm all about putting more plants on your plate. There's a ton of research, a ton of reasons why you want to put more plants on your plate. And the idea is to let's experiment. Let's get out there and try. Look, the typical um, American diet is about half of your plate, a big old hunk and piece of meat, maybe a potato slathered with some, you know, sour cream, butter, whatever, and then a tiny little portion of peas or green beans, right? I want you to start thinking a little differently. A quarter of your plate, that lean protein. Then you add all kinds of fruits and vegetables. When you go through the produce aisle, just take a look around you. There are more items 
in that aisle that you've probably never even tried. I know there's some on there that I still have yet to try. I just tried yucca um, about a month or so ago. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's like a starchy root, really delicious, super yummy. And there, I know there's people on here that say, I eat yucca all the time, but that's one of those things that may or may not be on, on your radar, right? But just look around. So really three quarters of your plate should be plants, fruits and vegetables, uh, grains, whole grains, excuse me, um, like uh, barley, whole uh, brown rice, quinoa, those kind of things. There's, again, there's hundreds of different kinds of, of grains. And just take a look, start experimenting with different items and see which ones you like and which ones you don't like. So instead of buying the uh, minute rice that's already in a little package, it's that's highly processed rice. Just buy a bag of rice, okay? A bag of rice. Okay, does it take a little longer to cook? Yes, it does. But what I recommend you do is you batch cook. So when I cook rice, I cook enough for probably two or three meals. So I only have to do it once a week and then we have it a couple of times. Rice is fine for, you know, several days, five or six days in the refrigerator, you, you know, so you can have it um, a couple of times during the week. That's what I like to do. Or you stick it in the freezer and it freezes just fine. You take it out uh, so that you don't have to, you know, cook it every single night. Uh, and then you've got, so you've got your lean protein, you've got your fruits and vegetables, you've got your whole grains, and then you have uh, legumes, which is beans, hundreds of kinds of beans. There's black beans, pink beans, kidney beans, all of those. And again, that is one thing. Okay, beans do take a while to cook if you're going to cook them. Uh, I do use canned beans. Again, so what I'm saying is to reduce the amount of highly processed. Typically, if you look at your cans and you can find canned beans that only have in them the beans, water, maybe a little sodium. Um, I always rinse my beans to make sure that we get the sodium off of there. But again, the less ingredients that means the less processing that's in there, right? And and beans is something that you can, again, get a batch cook if you have the time, but the canned beans and all of the um, so-called uh, plant-based kind of gurus, the people out there that that promote eating more plant-based foods, more, a lot of them use canned beans. So, and a lot of them um, have uh, Dr., uh, you know, MD at the end of their name. So I tend to listen to what they have to say. And so I do pretty much rely on canned beans. Although I do love making my own bean soup too. That's a great way to get a whole bunch of vegetables, a whole bunch of fiber. Um, we could talk, I could talk all day about uh, fiber and, and the benefits of all of that, but just really pay attention to what you're eating and try to start cutting out of your uh, daily routine those things that are highly processed and have a lot of chemicals, a lot of extra ingredients in it that, uh, you know, you could put, and I did this once many, many years ago, I put a Twinkie on the shelf and it still looked like a Twinkie two years, two years later. It was hard, but it still looked exactly like a Twinkie. There was no mold, nothing. What does that tell you? That tells you that it is so chocked full of chemicals that, you know, even the, the, the natural microbes out there don't want anything to do it. That should tell you something, right? So you want to really look at that. And when you do, when you switch this over, you're going to feel a difference. You're going to feel more energy. You're going to feel like super energized. It's just amazing. Joyful movement. I encourage you to get up and move every single day. The, the recommendation is 30 minutes of purposeful movement for at least five days a week. So about 150 minutes of, of movement uh, per week. Now, if you're just starting out, I'll tell you a little story because uh, a little over a year ago when I was working with one of my first coaches and he said to me, Jerry, uh, you know, do you move at all? Do you exercise at all? I was like, nope, not at all. He says, okay. So do you think you can walk for 10 minutes? I was like, sure, I can walk for 10 minutes. Okay. He says, I want you to take a 10 minute walk. So I had a treadmill and it was winter then. And I said, okay, I'll get on the treadmill. Well, I want to tell you 10 minutes felt like, oh my gosh, it wasn't as easy as I, I thought it'd be like, boom, like that. It wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Now, of course I have built up and I can walk for, you know, an hour if I want, but it's, it, 
it takes time. So don't, don't think that you have to jump right on and do 30 minutes. No, no, no. I highly recommend. And I know my good friend, uh, Laura Teets, who, or Laura, I'm sorry, Laura Ribbons would also, also recommends this. You start out slow, right? You just take, and, and again, five, maybe it's only five minutes is all you can do. That's okay. You're going to build up and just gradually build up until you can get to the point where 30 minutes feels comfortable. And initially it might be 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon. Once you can do that a couple of days a week, maybe you can up it to three or four days a week. Maybe you can up it to, you know, 12 minutes in the morning, 12 minutes in the afternoon. However works for you, just start adding a little bit of movement into your day. And if you're somebody, if you're an entrepreneur and you're sitting at your desk, please get up at least once every hour and do something quick, some kind of movement. Make it fun. Dance a little. Do some jumping jacks. Do some stepping jacks. I don't know if you ever heard of stepping jacks, but instead of jumping, you just step, you know, and that's a good way to start too. Instead of, you know, doing it as a jump, you do it as a step and, you know, you're just moving, get your body moving. Mindset, mindset is huge. And I'm going to start talking about that on the next slide. So here we go. Mindset really is key to getting this healthy lifestyle right. What is mindset? Mindset is really kind of like the lens that you look through. It is really your attitude, how you see things, how you interpret things, how you interpret other people. And when we have an open mindset, we feel like, okay, I can learn new things. Yes, you can teach this old dog new things. Okay, I'll try some new vegetables. Okay, I'll try walking for 10, 12, 15 minutes in the morning. Okay, I'll try a little bit of chair yoga. Uh, you're being open to trying new things. That's a growth mindset, okay? Another thing that you want to think about is how we're nourishing our body. And when your mindset becomes that, that I want to nourish my body with healthy good nutritious foods rather than thinking oh i you know what i can never eat this i can never eat that again i can never eat something else again no that's not true because i still i still indulge in in desserts not all the time but yes there's a time and a place we all want to have fun with food it's like a party in our mouth with a big old chocolate cake right i'm not ever telling anybody that you could never have that experience I'm telling you, you shouldn't do it every single day if you really, truly want to lose weight and want to help, um, enjoy a healthier life, okay? Now, what is a fixed mindset? A fixed mindset is like when you say, okay, I'm just addicted to uh, junk food and that's the way it is. Well, if that's the way you think, guess what? That's the way it'll be. Okay, we are, I'll be honest with you, we are addicted to that junk food. And do you want to know why? It's because the food industry hires scientists and their sole job is to be a craveability expert. That's their job. They are, try, they are putting in all the right ingredients, the right amount of salt, the right amount of sugar, the right amount of fats, the right amount of crunch, so that it is so delicious, so um, satisfying in your mouth, that explosion, that party in your mouth that I'm talking about, that you just want more and you want more. And something else I just discovered recently is that not only that, but they create the bags so that they're easy to reach into. Think of a chip bag, right? You can set that bad boy right there on the table, right there on the couch next to you. It stays open, doesn't it? So you can easily reach right in there and grab more. That's all. It's all marketing, folks. It's all marketing so that you stay addicted and they make more money because you buy more junk. All right. It's true. So when you really swap that mindset around and, and start thinking, OK, yeah, I want to live a healthier life. I want to. You know what? For me, this is what it was. And I'll share this is that. I've I've seen friends, I've seen people maybe that I know not so well, but struggle to walk from their car to the grocery store. And it breaks my heart. I'm like, we do not have to be in that type of position. Okay. It doesn't matter if we're 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. If we take care of our body, we can start now. It doesn't matter where you are in life, what, what kind of condition your body is in. 
you can start today and it'll make a difference six months from now, a year from now, two years, five years from now, it'll make a huge difference. But I want to remain as independent as possible as I go through, like I said, this last chapter of my life. I'm 65 years old. I figure I've got about 30 years to live. I want to live. I don't want to be stuck at home. I don't want to be relying on others to do things for me. I want to keep being out there. I want to be on the golf course. I want to be on the ski slopes. I want to be riding my bike. I want to be walking through the forest. Okay. All of those great things I want to be. And just as simple things as shopping. I want to be able to shop myself, put my groceries away, carry my groceries in and out. You know, I want to be able to be independent, put my own shoes on. Okay. That's in, in order to do that. We've got to start wherever you are now and continue to build that help moving forward. So if you are looking to kind of help change your mindset, grab an affirmation or two. I have one of these on my refrigerator and I have one of them on the cabinet where I keep my nuts and uh, dried fruit. I, I That's what I usually run for if I'm looking for a little snack, but I remind myself before I go in there so I don't take like a whole cub, I just take a little handful, right? Just a little handful. All right. So I choose foods that fuel my body and provide energy. My body is my temple. I choose to honor it with nutritious, wholesome foods. Find one of these, discover one of these. And just like if you're an entrepreneur, you probably are uh, reading affirmations that that have to do with, you know, keeping yourself in line with business, keeping yourself um you know, honorable to yourself and authentic and all of that. Same thing here. If you want to have better health, if you want to have more vitality, if you want to live a healthier life, then find an affirmation that really um, speaks to you and use that every single day. I want to talk a little bit about mindful eating because when we are mindful about the way we eat, when we are look at it, you know, put it, when you create a plate for yourself, it should be appetizing looking. It should be appealing. It should be colorful. It should be, you know, something that looks and tastes delicious because when I eat whole foods, it's delicious. I don't need anything that tastes yucky. It, I just don't. That's not what I'm about. But when you sit and just really are tuned into your meal, as opposed to mindless eating in front of the TV with a big bowl or bag of chips, Anybody done that? I have. I I mean, my husband, this my husband and I, this used to be like a pretty regular activity for us, right? Pop on a movie, make a bowl of popcorn, um, you know, grab a bag of chips, whatever it was, just sit there and you just eat and you're not really paying attention. All of that is just filling our body with um empty calories, like non-nutrition. I shouldn't say empty calories because they're calories. It's adding fat, it's adding, you know, all kinds of um, calories to it, but there's no nutrition in it. Whereas when you're mindful and you take your time and you're really enjoying your meal, that's when you can tune into your body. You'll know when you feel satisfied because you're paying attention. Put the screens away. Don't do it in front of your computer. Put your phone away and just enjoy the meal. And when you do that and slow down, you will know our bodies, we know innately when we're full. And when you start to recognize and feel that comfort level, you don't have to count calories. Although I have an idea of how much, you know, how many calories are in something. And if you've ever been on a diet, you have some idea of how much calories, you know, or anything, but you don't have to count calories if you begin to tune in to your own body and know when you feel satisfied. And then when you're eating mindfully and slowly and paying attention to all of that, you will stop when you're satisfied, okay? If you feel like, oh my gosh, that was so delicious. I need to have a second plate full. Stop and wait about 10 minutes and you'll realize, oh yeah, I'm satisfied. Have a glass of water, something to help you recognize when you feel satisfied instead of overstuffed. I promise you, you'll feel a lot better. I used to live on Tums, anybody else, right? Tums, um, Rolades, one of those things almost every night before bed, I'd, you know, oh, I'd need the Tums. It's because I overate. I, I'm so happy to only on very rare occasions, if I happen to eat something that, you know, doesn't really agree with me, but I, I used it every night, every night before bed, I would be eating that. Okay. 
If you feel like you're challenged with cooking, I can help you there too. All of these meals, these beautiful meals that you see in front of you, uh, I can I can show you how to make them in less than 30 minutes. There's pad thai. I've never made pad thai before. This pineapple chicken, uh, it's called tropical pineapple chicken. Oh my gosh, a one dish meal. You slice up uh, the chicken and some green pepper, so in some uh, snow peas and a seasoning packet with a can of pineapple. Pop it in the oven for about 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes maybe until the chicken is done. And you've got a one dish meal, super delicious, super healthy. Um, and, uh, enchiladas, whatever the whole, I, I could talk to you for an hour just about the meals. And this is a uh, part of what I teach, part of what I promote. I partnered myself with a company that offers spice blends that are clean without artificial colors, out of artificial sweeteners, without, um, any, uh, preservatives. It's dehydrated, it's just dehydrated food in the seasoning packet. So you can whip together a wholesome delicious meal in a matter of minutes and stick to healthy, clean eating, but have it done in a hurry. Super fun, super, um, super amazing. This is really about how to get movement into your day. You know, just get outside, take a walk, enjoy time with your children, um, enjoy time with your, with your spouse, your significant other. And you know what? Even working, uh, housework housework is is physical movement okay you ladies know what i'm talking about you get the vacuum out you get the mop out you get you know what we are moving so when you're doing it put a little oomph into it and you're going to get your movement activity that's the way i convince myself to get my housework done okay dara you can do your 30 minutes of movement just by getting your housework done today okay i'm killing two birds with one stone right it's a great way to do it so i don't want you to think that the only way to you know qualify for you know getting those movement activities is to go to the gym for an hour a week a day um, unless that's what you like to do. If that's convenient and that's what you like to do, more power to you. It's, that's extremely beneficial, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can, like I said, you can play with your children, dance in the living room. Um, I put this slide in here. I, I did this presentation for a group of moms. So, but just think about, you know, yourself just out taking a walk. I love being outdoors, taking a walk and being adventurous that way. Whatever works for you, put on a YouTube video, you know, <laughs> I'll be dating myself, but anybody remember Richard Simmons? You can still find him on YouTube and you'll be sweating to the oldies with Richard Simmons. What fun, you know, just pop it on for 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is. And you can, uh, you know, just move and groove. It's just about putting in some movement, 30 minutes, five days a week. That's your goal you know, and again, start out slow, start out where you can. But the impact of movement on our physical health, it, it makes sense. It's going to help you with your weight management, your cardiovascular health. Our heart needs to be pumping a little faster. It It's just like any other muscle, right? When you use it, and then when you're at rest, then it's really resting. When we don't do that, it's at rest is at a higher rate than we want it to be. For strength and flexibility, this is important just for everyday living. Like I said, you know, putting away groceries, what about the next time you fly on the airplane? How hard is that for you to stick your um, suitcase up in the overhead bin? My good friend Laura talks about that and I never thought of it before, but this is really just about being able to live life, like do those household things that you need to do. You know, you're carrying in heavy groceries, you're putting them away, you're putting them, you know, in lower cabinets, upper cabinets, all of that stuff. We need to maintain our, our strength and flexibility. It also enhances our immune system. I, I'm not going to go into great detail, but our lymphatic system, it does not have its own pump in the way it, it actually, which is, you know, huge in our immune um, system, but it, it, you need to move in order to get that all uh, pumping and it'll give you improved sleep. I know a lot of people as they start eating, having trouble sleeping. Well, get some movement in during the day. It will actually energize you. And if you think, oh my gosh, I'm too tired to move. And I've had that happen to me. I'm too tired. I don't want to take my walk. As soon as I start going five, six, seven minutes later, oh, boom, guess what? I'm energized. So it does. It actually, movement, activity, actually 
will energize you, will give you more energy. It sounds a little counterintuitive, but try it. I, I swear to you, it really, that's absolutely true. It's also impact on your um, mental health. There's mood enhancement, stress reduction, cognitive function. The rates of cognitive decline and dementia and Alzheimer's are going through the roof here in the US. I imagine all across the the world and many and many of the um, industrialized countries, but I I just really have, have looked at the research here in the U.S. and uh, a lot of that has to do with the food we're eating. A lot of it also has to do with um, the amount that we're moving or not moving. Because when we're moving, the blood is pumping throughout our body. It maintains brain health, mental resilience, all of that. Movement impacts every organ in our body, including our brain. And we wanna keep our brain functioning as well as we possibly can. So just um, get out there and move. What happens when we don't move? Muscle atrophy, it means that they start to uh, shrink. Um, we, we lose bone density, oh gosh. So uh, you've heard of osteopenia, osteoporosis. It's when our bones start um, deteriorating actually you know um we want to maintain that because as you often hear of uh people as they age and they fall then they break bones they break hips they all of that kind of thing a lot of that has to do with the fact that their bones are getting brittle we can help it doesn't mean that this is 100 percent guarantee but we can help reduce the uh, bone density loss by doing a little bit of strength training and strength training doesn't mean have to mean lifting um, heavy heavy weights or anything like that it's just you can use your own body for strength training and again uh, check in with Laura Rivens for that uh, joint stiffness do you feel joint do you feel stiff are you you know unable to move well guess what the more we move the less stiff we'll be and initially you're stiff it's like oh, oh. I do want to recommend if you're starting to do some kind of exercise, some kind of movement routine, please, you know, consult with your doctor, make sure it's all good for you. And that term, no pain, no gain. No, that's not for us. Anybody who, you know, that's for young kids, the athletes, super athletes. We, if something hurts when you're doing an exercise, stop, don't keep doing it. Check with a professional, check with a, you know, a certified uh, professional trainer, check with your doctor, check with a PT, check with somebody who knows, you know, about the inner workings. If something hurts, you should not continue to do it. Okay. Maybe a little discomfort, like when you're starting to do some stretching, you'll feel a little, you know, you'll feel that little stretch. I'm not talking about that. Um, but really, if there's if there's pain, stop. OK, um, we start to have cardiovascular issues. We start to have posture problems, digestive issues. Oh, my gosh. Movement is huge. If you're not moving the inside stuff every day, uh, part of it could be you're not don't have enough fiber in your diet. Another part is that you could not that maybe you're not moving enough now. Like I said, I worked with um, individuals with disabilities my entire life, and that was very often an issue for uh, individuals who do not have the ability to move their own bodies, and they need to use a wheelchair for access, and they need you know people to help them move. Well, that was a big job of the of the physical therapist. It was to help them get into different kinds of standing positions, moving positions, so that you know, that digestive system would work better. When we're sedentary, all of that food that's in there gets sedentary too. We need to help it move. So not only the fiber, the water, but also movement is going to help with your entire digestive tract and circulation. If you're, you know, getting swelling around the ankles, things like that. Um, again, talk to your physician, please. But uh, movement can really help with circulation, keeping everything circulating around your body. So let's just move and groove, right? And keep it simple. Just start out small and add to it um, as the days go on. Are you ready to really harness the power of your mind for better health? And again, like I said, it starts here. Like you've got to have that mindset that yes, you know, it's about empowering myself, empowering my body, living my best life, developing all that I can 
um, develop to live, to to enjoy and, and do all of that. And when we have a health mindset, a growth mindset, a mindset that yes, I want more, I want more areas of wealth in my life, then that is when your life will explode. And I am just absolutely honored to have been here today. If you would like to begin your journey, jump on a ditch session with me. Yeah. If you want to bitch during your bitch ditch session, go right ahead. But I have a free call for you. Seriously, I would like to help you figure out which steps you yourself can take to get on a better path for this area of wealth in your life. And when you are ready to, you know, jump all in, let me know. But just, this is just a free 30 minute call. Let's just talk about where you're at. I can give you a couple of tweaks. We can't change it all at once. That's not what I'm trying to teach people to do. I, I What I teach is take a couple of steps at a time, just a couple of things, and then you just add to it. And this is, you know, it's not about being being where you want to be in six weeks. It's about adopting this as a true lifestyle, as a true journey to better health, to, to this portion of wealth in your life. So I want to thank you very much. I am going to, um, I don't know why my mouse is not showing here. I wanted to stop the share, but here it is. And I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. And again, Tina, thank you so much for this summit. It was an honor and a privilege to be a part of this. And please reach out to me at uh, Ditch Session. I'm Dara Lee Simmons. You can follow me on Facebook or uh, Instagram, any of those, uh, uh, LinkedIn. Just uh, look for Dara Lee Simmons. And I look forward to helping you with your journey to better health this wealth. Bye-bye now.